Hi! Uh, this video is purely just for an update because I feel like um, there's so much to say and I didn't want to just talk for 10 minutes and then sing a song for them, anyone who who just wanted to see the song. <laughs> and they'd have to like wade through all the stuff that they may not want to hear about. And then there's, you know, the people that like don't even want to hear the stupid song. It's like, I just kind of want to know what's going on in your life since you've moved to China. Maybe you're in one of those two categories or maybe you don't care at all. Then you're not watching this. Um, so, it's been a while. Uh, for like two and a half, three weeks there, like I sounded like crap and I still, I just don't sound great in this country. Um, part of that is, as I've said, a big part of it, I think is the air quality. It's not up to snuff to Portland, to Portland standards. And, uh, for a while our apartment was a construction zone. I don't think I told many people about this. Like, I kind of just shrugged it off ever since I got here, ever since I moved to this apartment, which is actually pretty nice. So I live on the 32nd floor, which is the top floor of the building that we're in, which overlooks the city um, and a lake, South Lake. Uh, um, it's, yeah, it's really beautiful. But um, as soon as I moved in here, like within the first week or so, I noticed that there was water underneath our floorboards and the floorboards were like squishing and water was coming out of them. It was gross. So I voiced this and then the transformation begun. Uh, the bathroom that I, I have, um, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, bathrooms here, you've got your toilet, which is a squatty, so it's like in the floor. Uh, in the same room as your shower. So like you don't have shower curtains or anything. The room, like the room is your shower. And I had some experience with this when I was in Uganda. So like I was actually kind of stoked on this because you don't have to worry about the shower curtain and it getting gross. And honestly, it makes like, you know, you don't have to like worry about cleaning the toilet bowl and squirting here and there and like putting on the gloves and everything. Like you just psh, like wash it while you're showering. Um, then if you, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Uh, it's convenient. Let's just put it that way. Um, so for my bathroom, my bathroom got the brunt of it. They had to like reroute the whole bathroom. So they, it just became like this excavation zone where like all the tile was dug up. One day I came home and like looked in the bathroom area and they had like dug out like two feet. Like I thought we were going to be like talking to our like downstairs neighbors pretty soon. Like if we kept going any further. Um, so I had to share... My roommate, Cameron, I had to share his bathroom with him, and his is, like, a tiny little, like, it's definitely just for one person. Mine is meant to be shared with maybe, like, more, not, like, shared at a time, but, like, there's just more room for, like, people's things and anything. Like, you walk into his bathroom, and it's, like, like, I seriously, my, I fell in the toilet one time. Like, my foot went down because, you know, you're, like, showering, and you're trying to be conscious of where you're stepping, but it doesn't always work that way. So... The, they tore the floorboards from our bathroom to our uh, from our bathroom to our living room up. Like half of the living room was taken apart, and so there has just been dust everywhere, everywhere um, in our lungs, in, on our shoes, on our clothes, in our eyes, um, in the air. Dust is in the air, uh, in my bed, like everywhere, in my food uh, everywhere. Like, you couldn't sit. You couldn't do anything without being dirty. Um, so that was an experience for sure. And then for a week, we didn't have any water for more than a week, actually. And luckily, my job has uh, a location within the, like, shopping center area that I live in. So, you know, like, two-minute walk. But still, like, there's no water. So, like, you have to... <laughs> You have to do the business in your floor toilet, like, you have to have ways of, like, manually flushing it. And so each day I would, like, fill up this big bag that I have of water bottles and I'm, you know, we would manually flush our toilets with all these different water bottles. Uh, and that was life for a while. Uh, I was taking, like, hillbilly showers with these wet wipes that I used to, like, sometimes wash my face and stuff. It was great. <laughs> Makes you really appreciate things, like honestly. Um, I can 
survive that. And ever since then, like a couple of times, just without warning, our water has turned off and I'm like, I'm ready. I've got my water bottles. I'm good. That happened this morning, actually. Um, and then the water mysteriously turned back on uh, a few hours later, which is nice, which is not usually how it goes. Usually it's like another day or two where you're like, okay, I, okay, maybe it'll come back eventually. Um, so finally the floor has been restored. The dust is settling. Um, the water is now uh, up and down. Um, teaching is going well. I'm only really working like 11 hours right now with the company that I'm with, which they're going to bump it up eventually, but I'm trying to be patient with that. I also have been teaching lessons privately, which is going all right. Um, it's kind of fun, actually. I really I enjoy it. I've got private lessons. <laughs> I'm laughing for the few of you who will know that every time I say private lessons, I think of Tina Turner's private dancer. Um, dancer for money. <laughs> private anything. So, otherwise, this month has been really up and down. Um, that I would probably consider a down, all of the construction and the effect it had on my voice and overall well-being. <laughs> Just happiness. And then, uh, I don't know, this time of year, like, I can tell it's fall here. We're getting fall weather, which is nice. Uh, it's good. I have been, like, super pumped to be here certain days, and then other days, like, really struggling that I'm missing my friend's birthdays, and you know, one of my friends just bought a house, and uh, I really miss my dad. I really miss my dad and feel like I'm... I don't know, there are days when I wake up and I'm like, okay, I've learned my lesson. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go back home to my dad and to my friends and to my church. And, uh, but then I know, like, no, if I went, if I went back, like, it's too soon. It's too soon. The growth hasn't happened and there's still just, like, so much to experience. Um, the last few days have been super hard. I don't know, I'm like... I, I really want to be as transparent as possible and I'm working up to it because eventually I want to be able to make these and be just like brutally honest about everything but I've got like other people's business to take into consideration and then um, I don't know building up this relationship with everyone so good friend of mine um, is going through a hard time that he's kind of brought on himself and of course me being me I tend to like reflect upon how that makes me feel and um, basically it's brought up a lot of abandonment issues like past abandonment issues um, and I shouldn't have those because I have a rocking dad which actually like the next song that I sing is going to be for him and I'm going to sing his praises because I can't tell you guys enough how amazing my father is he's freaking awesome and so like knowing that I've and having grown up with a super loving awesome dad like abandonment issues shouldn't really be a thing and yet they are because I'm just an emotional insecure little girl sometimes um that has to do a lot with a dude that my mom dated for a while when I was a kid who I just absolutely adored who just up and left us one time like right before Christmas and like shattered both of our worlds and you know for many many reasons neither of us were ever the same at all ever again um and then you know of course like me and my relationships like I just I feel jaded I feel abandoned I sometimes like worry if I'm ever gonna have that like super fulfilling like lovey-dovey stuff that I just really crave and want and I've always dreamt about ever since I was little because that's the kind of girl that I am. So uh, this particular situation has brought up a lot of those feelings, especially because this particular person was like, he's been there through all of it. He's like such a good, dear family friend and just like a big brother to me and just an amazing person. And I need to stress that because you know that you're an amazing person and you know that you have standards to live up to. Um, but he has always been like this pillar for my mother and I and uh, just gets me thinking about everything and people and trust and love and only being accountable for yourself. 
Um, there's just a lot that comes up, especially in this season of my life, because I'm, um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm, like, rocking it at, like, doing things on my own, and then other times I, like, still very, very, very miss my old relationship, even though I'm, like, I know that I don't, but I do, and just going back and forth between that drive girl crazy. Um, so, it's been... Overall, it's been a good month. I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. I'm going to a Western-style restaurant out here with my roommate. Um, I don't at all expect it to even compare to my mother's cooking, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be Thanksgiving. Like I get to have Thanksgiving in China, so that's awesome. Uh, Thanksgiving is probably the hardest holiday or time to not be with my family. Like, sorry, I'm not gonna be able to watch the lines with you, Daddy. I'll be praying, I'll be praying that they win. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope all of yous have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. I miss all of you so very much. Um, get ready for a song coming up here just a bit. It's for my dad, because he's awesome. Love you. Love you, love you, love you.